brings us about to our message this morning. Last Sunday we talked about hope. This Sunday, the second Sunday in Advent, it's about comfort. And we're going to find out about that in the message. Father God, we come today with bowed heads and humble hearts. We come thanking you for one more opportunity. We thank you for one more blessing, Lord, that you open our eyes to see a new day. Oh, God, it may have been a little cool, but God, you blessed us with the sunshine. And God, as we look at other places where tornadoes were all about, for some reason, Lord, you, 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 you got them around us. And that we're able to gather today and worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Knowing as we celebrate this season that we call Christmas season, Advent season, looking for the coming the second coming of Christ. God, we thank you. We ask that you continue to be in our service, open our minds, open our hearts, open our eyes that we may hear and see whatever you have for us to understand this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Comfort. Mm. Comfort, a word that's easily put out there. In Isaiah 40, chapter, verses 1 through 11. And if I use for a typological expression, you see it's comfort. On last Sunday sermon, we were talking about hope. God had allowed his people to endure many hardships because of their stubbornness. <laughs> kind of talking about us. He allowed the temple to be destroyed in, in Jerusalem. Now, I want you to understand that God did not cause this, but God allowed this to happen. See, that's why we get it wrong. People say, well, well, how can God that you serve do these things? No, God doesn't do them. He allows things to happen in our lives because of the things that we have done. You see, the people of that time prayed to God and they weren't asking him for anything in particular. They say, Lord, we, we, you know, we, we don't want anything. We just want you to do something. It's kind of like it is now. Things are so out of whack that we don't know what's going on from one day to the next. We say, Lord, just do something. God's people are suffering because of the choices that we made. <laughs> that we made. He didn't make them. That we made. It's, it's so to the point that, that we're even afraid to, to walk the streets at night. Let me fix that. We ain't afraid to walk the streets at day. There's things going on now that people are doing things. I've never, ever heard before, but it's happening now. You see, we are experiencing so much evil that we're like the people of Isaiah time. We ask, how long, O oh Lord? How long must we endure these evils of our, of our doing? How long, Lord? How long? Our text today begins about a drastic change. Heretofore, all we've heard was the bad news about destruction, about doom. But today's lesson brings a ray of sunshine after the storms. Israel has rejected God. And much like the people of today, God has not rejected them. Out of all that we've done, God still loves us. He still blesses us over and over and over. We look back at things that we've gone through, and it, we're there because of the grace and the almighty God. We, we don't deserve it, but he gives it to us anyhow. You know, he blesses us over and over, much like little children that have stumbled away to an uncertain path. 
they stumble away and, 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 and get out into the world and be bruised by their fall, but they have a God that picks them up. Hello, somebody. Brushes them off. And able to put them in a spot in which they're able to understand and know that everything is going to be all right. Their sins, our sins, aren't the found word. Thank God. Because if our sins were the found word, we... We just pack it up and go because we're, we know we don't have a chance in even looking toward him. But because of God, God has some words of comfort for us today. And that's the words we need to hear. God does not just send good news one time, but he sent different messages to bring good news to us all the time. We have messages every day. There's many people in the pulpit this morning talking about the messages of God. But how many of us here? First, as a messenger, a king is coming to restore and reveal. Oh, we heard that in, in, in verse 40, no, 3 through 6. You see, in the second Sunday in the Advent, in verse 3, we hear these words. In the wilderness... Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the desert a highway for our God. It's announcing an arrival of a king. When Jesus was born, a king came to earth. Not just any king. There is none like him. No king ever like Jesus. See, he's a king that reigns, but also, he's the king that serves. See, the God, our, our, our king, serves us. See, most of the time, the problem that we had and where people didn't understand who Jesus was, they were going through things. They had been destroyed by the Babylonians and all these things were going on. So when they were looking at a savior, they were looking for a king to come in on a big white horse and he was going to lead them in battle. That was not the king that came. The king that came, came riding in on a donkey. Oh, Lord. And so we didn't understand. But look at what this king does. He does two things. First, he launches a major renovation pro project. He said, every valley <laughs> shall be lifted up. And every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall be level and the high places made plain, Isaiah 40 and 4. Jesus came to fix things to the way that they should be. Yeah, not, not, not the way that we want them to be. He wanted to fix things in the way that it should be. And so we have to understand. We experience that through the reading of the gospel. How Jesus, what, he healed the sick? He forgave sinners? He met with outcasts, those that are excluded, and invited them into the community. You know, just think about it. If we would heal the sick, uh, love the outcasts, invite them in the community, he said that those that were excluded were closer to the kingdom then some of those that think we in there. <laughs> See, we got church folk think we already made it. Oh, we got it. Oh, I got my backpack I already. You have made it yet? It's some folk out there. You know, I look at all the things that go on. You know, sometimes we sit up here with all we have and we won't even share. But that old wine, oh, he don't have nothing but that bottle of wine, but he's going to share it with his brother. <laughs> uh, he uh, take it and he share it with his brother. But see, we sit around here and have access to things and won't even share with each other. Y'all know I'm telling the truth now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But see, we got to understand. He said that they told us that some of them going to get in before some of us. You know, he's still doing that today welcoming sinners and, and, and rebels and changing lives and embracing the excluded. See, if we start embracing the excluded, 
This is what is going to take place. This is what it needs to take place in order for to stop the wars. We see all that war going over there. We sit over there. What needs to take place? Hey, we need to bring in some of the ones that excluded. We need to be forgiving. We need to start building up relationships. We don't have to go through the things that we're going through now. If we do, he's already given us a pattern of how we ought to act, how we ought to do things. But we, we, we want to change. Well, I, I think you, that's a problem. You thought. You need to understand what Jesus thought, not what you thought. The second thing, he also shows us God's glory. And it says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, it's Isaiah 40 and 5. If it were not captured by God's glory, then they will be captured by some lesser God. And see, that's the problem. We were letting lesser gods capture us. And we we're running in their shoes and listen to what they say. Let them get in our ears and understand that we're listening more to them than we are of anything else. And we're not understanding that it's about God and not about us. And when we can learn to do that and put everything down and listen to God for who he is. See, God's got the right, he's got the right, uh, if I want to put the right recipe of how we want to live life. But we're too stubborn to listen. And, 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 and you know, when we look at all of these things and the word, what? became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, his glory as the only son of the father, full of grace and full of truth, John 1 and 14. The second message, God's words won't fail. Hello, somebody. Men's word fail. <laughs> Men's word fail. Uh, hello, somebody. Men's world, word fail. But God's word fail not. We need to understand. Isaiah 46 through 8. All flesh is what? Grass. And all its beauty is like the flower of the fields. The grass withers. The flower will fade when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withered, the flower will fade, but the word of the Lord of God shall stand, what? Forever. The problem is that we are very unreliable. Isaiah says, if we are good, <laughs> which we're not. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> we're not good. Uh, if, if we are good, we're not around long enough to make a change. We only here for a moment. But God's word is forever. But you cannot count, you can count on God. Isaiah makes it clear that God's promises do not depend on us. He don't need no help from us. What can we do? He speaks and things happen. He moves and things happen. Words are changed. But God does not need to depend on us. If he, it depends on God's word. And God's word always stands. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He'll always be the same. See, God's word changes not. We want to go in and say, well, I thank God. Me, No, 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 no. <laughs> As, as the old saints used to say, God said it, I believe it, and that's it. You know, there's no discussion about it. And see, the problem is, is we want to go around and change what God, what God meant. Well, I think he meant, no, he didn't. Let's just make it plain. No, he didn't. He knew what he was doing. His words was perfect. The way he did things was set in perfection. But we just don't want to hear the real truth. You know, the found messenger is the news is for you in verses 9 through 11. He says, so hear the words of verse 11, not the world in general, but for you. 
he would tend his flock like a shepherd. He would gather the lambs in his arms. Uh, he would carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are young. So let me tell you some good news today. God speaks words of comfort. Comfort. We need to hear God's word. We need to hear the word that, 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 that he gives us. Comfort to you today. A king has come to restore all that we have gone through. Yes, we've gone through some trouble. We've gone through some trials. We've gone through COVID. We've gone through hurricanes. We've gone through tornadoes. We've gone through floods. But God is here to reveal to you, hey, he's coming to make all of these things and restore all of these things back to you. I look at those people yesterday that were hit by the tornado in Tennessee. God, just in a breath of a moment, tornado comes through and wipe away everything that you own, everything that you work for all your life. But sometimes we need to understand that we don't worry about things. If he spared your life, you can always get things. Oh, but you can't get another life. And so we thank God for that, that life were spared. You need to understand, a king has come to restore and to reveal. We've got to be willing to open our eyes to hear and see God for who he is. His promises to you are secure. They are promises to you. He tends to you. He cares for you, particularly needs, and the most of all, God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only son to step down out of heaven, to walk this earth, to endure all of the things that we endure, all the pain, all the heartaches, all the sorrows. Oh, he stepped down that he can go through those things so that he can experience everything that we have to go through. Why? So that he can restore you and give you comfort. That's the God 